Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this is Machine Shop Tips number 315, and this will be a two-part video, concluding with tips number 316, but 315 is going to be exclusively about uh, splicing belts, lathe belts, uh, leather belts, fabric belts, and uh, in this video I'm going to talk about all the equipment uh, that is used and supplies and then in the next video I'm going to show you how to use uh, yet uh, one more type of lacing device and that this is my newly acquired number three clipper belt lacer and you have watched uh, or might have watched two other videos that I had on this subject and you go back and watch these if you're in the mood but uh, some of what I'm doing today is a repeat and an update of the subject. The page you are looking at is out of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book, uh, edition 34, but this is probably in all the different editions. But uh, the term uh, of splicing leather belts is referred to as lacing them and that comes from the more archaic method of lacing them in this manner probably long before they had good glues or uh, the belt clips that we're going to use in this video so uh, I'm not going to touch on this at this time but uh, there's an interesting picture there and some directions on how to do that if you ever, would ever have such a notion my dad always spliced them in the old machine shop by, uh, by gluing them with the scarfing method, but that usually requires the glue to set overnight. But the more modern method, but it's not really very modern at all, is the, uh, uh, using the clipper or other brands, alligator uh, belt hooks or belt clips. They call them hooks here, but you have seen me do this in the other ones, and that procedure is... Uh, looks like this. This is a rather old beat-up belt, but uh, the, the uh, clipper belt lacer that I show you here is a, is a wider one. I think it goes up to five inches for, and they make uh, even larger ones that are used for uh, threshing machine belts uh, and so on. So let's take a look at some of these supplies. We are looking at a copy of the 1958 McMaster Car Catalog, number 64, and I'm so glad I have some of these old catalogs here for uh, reference purposes in my archives. But uh, the, the thing that I'm showing you here is that there's about six pages devoted to uh, splicing of belts. This uh, page, for instance, has all the different kinds of belt dressings and then uh, belt cements. Uh, glues that is and over here are the belt clips this uh, section here is clipper and there's other brands here as well but clipper I always thought was the premier brand but on the next page here again are uh, tools uh, there's rivets for uh, riveting belts together if one would ever do that and belt stretchers and belt plates and clamps and all of that but on this page here are the actual uh, lacers and cutters, shears and so on for handling the belts and looking over here and I'm going to show some more pictures of this later on but here's some of the the larger machines that might be used in a shop where they have years ago hundreds of belts that had to be cared for and spliced wide belts narrow belts but right here is the number three clipper and that's the one I got and it cost about 50 bucks in 1958 And one more page yet, I believe, is uh, devoted here to alligator belt lacings and uh, some other brands, Turtle, and other belt fasteners here. So there are six pages devoted to this, so you can see that this was a very important thing years ago. Now, I looked in the brand new McMaster car catalog, of which I have a copy that my gunsmith neighbor gave to me. And in that, there are also four to six pages of this, but nothing like this. It is all devoted to uh, much wider belt lacing that would be used on conveyor belts in factories. So it's almost strictly conveyor belts now. And you would have to search uh, far and wide, I think, to find this kind of stuff and probably used on eBay because it's just archaic thing of the past. But then again, 
I don't cover anything new. In looking uh, here in John Walter Stanley Tool book, some of you may find it interesting that there were planes manufactured specifically for belt makers. The number 11 belt maker plane, the last one was made the year I was born in 1943. But if I can read real quickly the description of uh, this, and you can skip through this if you don't like it. But right here, it said that they were used for chamfering or planing the laps of leather belting for joining in both repair and manufacture of drive belting used as pulleys on uh, line shaft, power tools, treadle operated machinery, and farm equipment. Uh, these are collector planes and uh, it's very unlikely you will ever see one. Drive belts were made of several different materials, the most common of which are leather in various uh, widths and thicknesses. And uh, then there were fabric belts, I suppose a lot of other materials too, but these are almost like canvas belts. They're a little bit lighter weight. I don't know which one drives the better, to be honest with you, but these came from auctions, and at auctions sometimes there'd be piles and piles of these, some of them uh, half chewed up by mice, but uh, often no value and they just sit there or, or the whole pile goes for a dollar. But some of these are endless belts that have no splices, but uh, I suppose they were ordered for a certain job. But if they do break, then uh, the splicers would be, and the lacers would be necessary. I use this material uh, for other uses sometimes. It's, it's very heavy duty. It's got a layer of rubber or something in there too. And you've seen me uh, splice with this one. I made a, a lathe belt up, I think for the Logan lathe. That's in one of those other videos. But there were different materials and different grades of it. And uh, some of it was uh, glued together because there weren't too many uh, cows or cattle that had uh, skin that thick. So if they wanted a real heavy thick belt, they had to uh, laminate them. But you may see some of this. It's rather expensive now if you can find it. And you might find it on eBay if, uh, if you need it. But some of them are synthetic materials now. You know, this belt is about 8, 10, or 12 foot long. The average steer or cow is about six foot long from the nape of his neck to where his tail starts at the very most. You know, I measured one once. So in order to make a long belt, they have to, uh, to splice them at the factory. And I don't mean splicing them uh, with belt hooks, but by uh, cementing or gluing them together. And in examining this particular belt, you can see the glue line right there. And then the other glue line right here. So it's between my two thumbs, so that's four inches of, uh, of lap, and they have scarfed the belt. Now can you see the faint line there where they have scarfed it or tapered it? And then of course it is cemented or glued with a leather glue, and it is incredibly strong. But that's how they make a belt of uh, indeterminate length and they could make a hundred footer if they needed to. As a matter of fact, they probably do make it a hundred foot or used to and then cut it to whatever length the customer or the catalog uh, desires. So that's scarfing and some of you leather workers that do other type of leather work are, are aware of that but you can, you can see that line just barely. And that's very smooth right there, or I can feel that, but on the, uh, you know, we got a hair side and we got a flesh side here, but on this side it, it's, it's quite smooth, so that's probably be, even been sanded. And I don't know if this belt is 20 years old or 80 years old, but it's in very good condition. And uh, there are several of those on this, this roll of belting. Now, uh, some of these videos are not very well taken or uh, not too many people watch them. So 
Please tell your friends who might be interested in this and spread the word, you know, if you, if you have people you know that w might be interested in something like this because on obscure uh, videos like this, I'm, I'm sometimes hesitant to make them because there's so few views for the amount of time that I spend making them. Uh, thank you for that and uh, please continue watching my videos and on with the show. That was just another little uh, diversion. I've got this 7-Up crate uh, that has quite a bit of lacing in it, and so let's go through that real quickly. I'll talk about the sizes here in just a moment, but uh, it's always uh, these clips are always uh, held together by paper, and the paper isn't removed until after it's installed in the lacing uh, device, but it tells the size, and uh, they're usually about a foot long, and you cut off whatever you need. Clipper again, and I always liked that logo, was what I considered the, uh, the premier brand. Uh, they came in, uh, in shorter pieces like this too. And there's other uh, brands here. This one is not even marked as to what the brand is. Some of this is pretty old and rusty. This is a, another type where they're held together. I think they call this safety lacing because they're held together. I suppose so uh, pieces can't fly off. Some of this I need to throw out. And there's an awful lot that I did throw out. Here's another whole box of assorteds. And in here, interestingly enough, is a rather old uh, set of directions for the clipper on how to uh, splice. I suppose one of these came with each box. Then, uh, in this box are the splicing uh, material that hold the hooks together. And that can be made of steel. And you can see the little ribs in here. Now I understand a lot of it's plastic. Cat gut was used. And I'm not sure if this is cat gut or rawhide. But it's very tough material. And this piece appears to be plastic. Sometimes people just use a piece of welding rod or wire, but the, uh, the steel ones do not tend to slip out because they got these little notches on them. And it isn't too long before the leather and cat gut take uh, a little impression and they do not, intend, not tend to slide out of the splice. And this can just be cut off to length with uh, side cutters. As mentioned earlier, there are a lot of different brands. This one is uh, Armstrong Bray. They call themselves the Belting People. And this was stainless steel. And I noticed that they also make it in non-sparking because I suppose that they use big old belts in a gunpowder factory and they sure couldn't have steel lacing that might create a spark. So they had uh, different materials that this was made out of. This is size number four and a half. Here's a little chart telling you the different sizes and uh, their application uh, that is in regards to the thickness of the belt. And there's also a page in the uh, McMaster card catalog. And this must be a universal system, not just for a certain brand. And in here, wow, that's sharp. Oh, those are sharp. Almost pierced my skin. This also, I think, is what we call the safety type that won't, won't fly apart. Whereas the, the clipper, you can see there isn't anything to hold the hooks together. Yeah, these are, this is just as sharp as a needle. No brand or marks on this, so it has to be kept in the box to keep track of. Now, in this box also is some of this odds and ends. These are what I call uh, alligator clips. I think they're alligator clips. But they are just uh, pounded with a hammer or I suppose a vise into the belt. And so you didn't need any special tools for that. Probably could be, do a, could be done out in the field or, or some other place. All you need is a hammer and, and maybe a piece of wood or something like that to pound against or steel. Maybe they even did it against the steel wheels on the, on the combines. And this is all stuff that I acquired over a period of time at auctions or, or garage sales. 
Let me show you some of the different sizes now and then I'll conclude this part of the video. Let me digress here just a little bit. I'm back to McMaster Car and they call these uh, uh, clipper connecting pins. These are the, again, uh, can be made of different materials. And notice here that uh, uh, they don't mention cat gut at all. But they're made of uh, the clipper brand, either lubrahide or rawhide or, surprisingly, bamboo. But the uh, lubrahide, they claim, wears two or three times longer than plain rawhide. And you can read that information there because this is out of print now. You won't find this any other place. And uh, when we talk about belt lacing now, and the picture I showed you in the South Bend catalog there is the material that would be used for actual belt lacing. And a couple different materials there, rawhide, chrome, and uh, mackerel, whatever that is. All right, back to the sizes now. It doesn't always tell you what size uh, on the actual card, but if you look in the catalog here, or on that other box of uh, Armstrong Bray hooks, but uh, you, you might find the sizes. But here it tells you that the number one size is for the eighth to five thirty seconds thick. The number two is for three sixteenths thick. The number three for three sixteenths uh, over a different size pulley. So it, the pulley size apparently matters as well. And then number four, blah, 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 and you can read the rest. And the number two and three is what really what I need to use for my applications and probably yours as well. But that's the size that I have the least of. And also note here now again with Clipper that they were available in steel, cupro nickel, and there's that non-sparking phosphorus bronze that I talked about, and then uh, the acid-resistant stainless steel because years ago maybe in a plating plant or some other place where there was tremendous amount of corrosive fumes in the air it was necessary to have some uh, acid resistant uh, uh, products so that the belts didn't fly apart. I found this quite interesting I hope that some of you did also while I'm still on that page here is reference to safety belt hooks and uh, all about that if you want to read that or perhaps some of you have some of these old catalogs but there probably aren't too many of them left. To repeat on this Armstrong Bray box there's the, there's the sizes but let me show you the different sizes that I have from uh, I'll start at the large here's the largest that I have and that those are number six and the next size down is number five, also clipper. That was made up in uh, Michigan, patented. There is the number four and a half. And there's the four. And finally, we're getting down to the size that. I really need, and that's the number two. I have very little of that. That's, I think, what I need to use in the next part of the demonstration, or the next video, rather. And then here's some number one. It isn't marked, but it's since it's much smaller than the number two, I believe this to be a number one, which apparently is the smallest size. So I think I've told you all you would ever want to know and probably more about the different products used for splicing drive belts. Hope you liked this. Now be sure and stay tuned and watch the next video, which is going to be number, if I can find it here, uh, it will be number 316, and it's going to be in regards to using my big new, not new, uh, new to me, and... Uh, show you how to use this. Stand by. See you in the next video. It's Tubal Cain saying so long for now.